All right. Welcome to Thursday, day two of EduStream. EduStream is a special program, a webinar, a multi-day webinar we put on for teachers, educators, IT, and video technology uh, specialists in schools. This show is for everyone from K-12 to your local community colleges and smaller schools all the way up to your D1 big schools like Ohio State, USC, or University of Texas. We don't care how big you are, how small you are. If you're in education and you're working with video for kids, that's what this show is about. One of the things that we want to do is yesterday's show was about picking the right camera for PTZ. Today's show is about tips for building a school production studio capable of handling all your needs now and in the future. EduStream TV is brought to you by the folks at Broadfield Distributing and Video Guys. So, the point of this show is to learn how to turn your production studio and content creation of your entire school district or even the campus. So we're going to focus now on putting a production studio in. Now, you may have an existing production studio. You may be looking to upgrade it. You may be thinking, how do I start from scratch? We're going to try to cover all those levels of a production studio. And then we're also going to talk about how you can link that production studio to well, beyond the studio to remote production to the cloud. We're going to tap on that a little bit. We're going to talk about HD or 4K. We're going to talk about video conferencing technologies, bringing it in SRT. We're going to talk about video distribution through the campus. We're really going to give you an overarching look at all this. You're welcome to give us questions. I'm going to get to those questions at the end of the show. But right now, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Gary Batan. I am the president of video guys I, I but uh one of the things that i think a lot of people need to know about me for this show is is i'm on my local board of education the Plainview old beth page school district here on long island i've been on the board of education going back to 2007 had a few years off in the middle but i'm back on it now and i've been very instrumental in helping our district move forward with technology and where we've gone and the key to this show is we really want to talk about the studio needs and what's for video in the future because we kind of had to spend a lot of money on video technology during the pandemic, but that was really for distance learning and for just getting kids the ability to be learning remote. Today's show is really on production studios and creating high quality content with your school. So now we're going to meet our guests. So if we can bring them all up on board and give you the lower thirds, not that one. We've got Chris from New Tech. We've got Shane from Telestream, Laurent from Netgear, and Julian from Epifan. Now, I'm going to give each of you the chance to introduce yourself. So you're invited on the show because you guys are each technology experts in your companies. You have years of experience, both the companies you're at and other companies you've been with. And we really want you to go into some of the decision process on how a school, what they should look for, what's important, what's not. And I think our timing is great for this because... If you're in a bigger school with a bigger budget, anything we talk about now, you can go to the NAB show and actually see it in April on, on how it works and stuff like that. Plus, at NAB, there's always a ton of news and stuff like that. So I'm going to go around the room and the quads the way I see. I'm going to try pointing. And whoever I point to when I do this, I'll know how to point. So look at that. We're going to start with Chris Burgos up there in that corner. Gary, it's awesome to be here as always. Uh, my name is Chris Burgos. I work with New Tech. I've been working with them a little over eight years now. Um, and um, my background is I actually started working with a TriCaster in college uh, and, and uh, working events and shows, covering those kinds of sports games and things like that. And that sort of that road eventually led me to the position where I am now to talk to everyone here about uh, how, how New Tech and things like a TriCaster and some of our products can help in education. Cool. Shane, you're up next. Thanks, Gary. Shane from Telestream, application specialist, providing solutions for everything, video production, streaming, hosting, uh, distribution. Uh, 11 years in pre and post production and kind of brought that into the streaming and, and video world here at Telestream. Um, a lot of resources in the education world. So, Gary, this is a perfect fit. Thanks for having me. Cool. Julian from Epifan. 
Sure. So I'm Julian Fernandez from Epifan. I've been uh, at Epifan about a year and a half now. I've actually been kind of in this pro AV higher ed space uh, for more than the last five years. Uh, you know, while Chris got thrown into it for from knowing how to use uh, some of the kit in college, I just got thrown into it because I was the young guy in the room closest to college and was more on the infrastructure side for a while. So got to know a lot around classroom technology and now kind of bridging that uh, into the broadcast world, which is why it's so much fun to be at Epifan because we, we have a foot in both camps and uh, can kind of help you deliver video across campus. Awesome. And now, Laurent from Netgear. Hey, Gary. Thank you. Laurent Mazia. I'm the Director of Product Management for the uh, Magnet Switches in Netgear, and I focus really much on the uh, AV by now. I'm also uh, handling the uh, ProEV Engineering Services team. You may know that we have a, a ProEV design team that is helping in and out projects across the uh, AV industry. So really happy to be here. 18 years in this job, but I can tell you, the past 10 years, we have been full speed in the pro AV and also residential medical AV lighting and broadcast. Thank you. Awesome. Thank all you guys for being here. I think I want to start the show with a, a broad kind of question. Uh, what do you think will be the top technology, technology development affecting schools and production, not three years from now, but you know, right now, this year, 2023. So if you want to talk about some NAV stuff that you're pretty sure is going to be shipping now, that's okay. But I don't want to go too far into the future. And I'm going to say, uh, we'll, we'll go in the same order we introduced, introduced ourselves. So Chris, you could start us off. Yeah, I, I think that we're going to see a big change in interconnectivity. Um, piggybacking off of the technologies we implemented during the pandemic, how do we interconnect leveraging something like NDI and the ability to do things over the WAN. Uh, how do we interconnect our school districts uh, or our, our, our networks in that respect? I think that's going to hit pretty big because now we're seeing that, hey, you know what? We went through three years of using this technology. W what does that look like? How can we mature that? How can we get more students access to more things? And then if I'm going to be very particular, I think we have this new product called the Flex that we're going to talk about a little bit later. That is, I think, a, a, a big key towards understanding and implementing a live studio experience now that people are back in the uh, physical space. Awesome. Now, Shane, we're going to go to you. And one of the things I want to preface with Shane is Wirecast is both a software and they have a turnkey appliance thing. So when you're talking about this, let's talk more about, you know, Wirecast and software, because you're really our software guy here today. Definitely. Yeah. Well, and I also think it's more of a solution-based approach now where all of these companies were working together and we're working together kind of seamlessly within the industry. So you're going to see, you know, industry leaders coming together to provide singular solutions to these, these departments, the faculties, the boards. Um, with Wirecast in particular, the easiest way to describe it is ease of connecting your devices, ease of composing your shots, and ease of choosing your deliveries. And we say deliveries now because it's not just streaming. It can be an internal workflow over webinar. It could be recording to disk. So on the application standpoint of Wirecast, what we're doing is we're trying to streamline these workflows and make it kind of the ease of use for both faculty and students. Cool. Julian, you're up. Sure. So I think one of the things we're going to keep seeing, you know, we've all kind of touched on, hey, the last three years we deployed a ton of gear. We were kind of in video survival mode with the pandemic. I think the evolution this year is really going to be around standardizing those workflows and making sure that the video you're delivering is high quality because when everyone's doing video, you need to make sure that your content is engaging and achieving your goals. So it's really around now it's optimizing these technologies that you might have purchased, maybe adding some new things in uh, things, you know, like our pearls, we see schools coming to us and saying, hey, I deployed a Pearl Mini for, for this. I realize I actually need it for this other use case as well. Or the president wants one in, in her office because she wants to do a weekly show now. So we're just seeing the quality of production start to step up across the board and really kind of like uh, she was touching on, making sure that the ease of access is there so that students and faculty can get that experience and not be uh, overwhelmed by the technology, but just focus on delivering that content that they'd like to, to do. You know, that, that's a great point. And I think, you know, what I used to say is when the pandemic started, it was just make it work. It didn't matter. Just make it work. The quality was kind of, if it worked, it worked. And you saw stuff on the networks, you know, back in 2020 and 2021 that we were like, we were shaking our heads like, how does this even, 
come on, the people were pixelated. There was lip sync issues. There was people sitting in front of a bright light, you know, window and not realizing what faculty, I mean, all the things you learned in TV class 101 in high school were thrown out the window just to get the show on. And now when we're going forward, we're talking about, you know, picture quality, which I think is so important because we all forgot we were on a freight train that was about to go to 4K and UHD and HDR and these great things. And then the pandemic kind of set it back. And what's interesting about this whole thing is that, and I'm going to get to you, Lauren, in a second, because when years ago, when I sat down with Dr. Crossy, first described NDI to me, it was before a trade show. It was at the trade show. We were on a table and he asked me, Gary, what do you think would be the two most important things from this show this year? And I said, 4K. I said, an IP video. And he said, you're really right, but you're also completely wrong. We won't get to 4K without IP video. So with that kind of layup, Laurent, where do you see us going now that people are focusing back again on 4K and image quality? Well, I mean, this is a, a, a great question. And, you know, when it comes to education, we can see that this, this world of uh, video production continues to evolve with all my uh, uh, attendees in this, uh, in this show. So thank you for having us. You know, so I'm going to come back to what I think is important because what is at the center of uh, the video of IP in general and the NDI live production in particular, this is the network. NDI is great because it's flexible, it can expand, but it is leveraging an Ethernet network. And usually the Ethernet network is the worst enemy. This is the worst enemy for AV over IP and NDI, because when the network fabric is no good, even if you have all these technologies, if you have all these goals and, and NDI and 4K and live production, you know, the experience can be bad. So as a modest contributor, you know, we at Netgear are trying to, you know, reunite these two worlds. We don't want to have the AV comply to the IT standards. Instead, we are working very hard by certifying our solutions to, to make the switchers compatible with AV and, and certified. So today, the, the Netgear AV line switches are, you know, certified by NewTek for NDI and NDI TV. And what we see coming by NAB is always more ease of use, getting rid of cumbersome IT settings, providing a AV interface. And uh, at NAB, we'll show a centralized configuration so that if you have a larger K-12, or maybe a larger education facility, uh, you can, uh, you know, then easily deploy certified NDI profiles, but not only that, Dante AS67 audio across uh, a number of switches, you know, using AV tips and words into something that speaks AV. Yeah. So our next question is, how do you think NDI has helped shape modern productions? But before we get there, I'm going to bridge over because Laurent was being far too modest. So I just want to stress this for all those IT video people watching the show. If you put Netgear switches in for the applications we're talking about, your life will be wonderful. Things will work correctly from the first time. It will be expandable, stable network. You won't have to worry that you don't know video. You won't have to worry that it's got complex IT stuff that's beyond your capability. It's really been a breakthrough technology. We can get to it more. But I, I'm going to say this for all you educators out there. Our number one tech solution for NDI and IP-based IP video is getting the right switch. And that right switch is a Netgear switch. So, And the Netgear M4250 and up family of switches. So now we're going to dial it back a little bit to NDI. And Chris... I want to go into how do you think NDI has shaped modern productions, but I think before we do that, I'd like to ask you to just let these people know what NDI is, because we might have some school people here who are video people or computer people, whatever, but we're using an acronym, NDI, and it might not mean anything to them, or it might be scaring the bejesus out of them. So do me a favor, talk about just what really NDI is, and then talk about why a school should be going to it. Sure. Um, I want to tell a little story about this because it's very central to my existence at NewTek. I joined NewTek in October 2015, which was right after there was a big show happening in Europe. And that was the actual first ever time NDI was talked about in the public. Uh, NDI stands for Network Device Interface, uh, and it is our way at NewTek for uh, ease of connectivity for video, audio, uh, things like camera control, and allows our systems to very quickly uh, expand in just using the network. And so uh, I 
I'm using NDI technology currently on this show, uh, as I often do. Uh, I, I am on a green screen, but I'm I'm actually taking my webcam and bringing that in over the network to my TriCaster and then doing sort of the key and, and all that stuff. But the reason why I always bring up my start to new tech uh, in this journey is that NDI is about as long and old as I've been at new tech. So you can sort of track those things uh, together. And I remember sitting down in San Antonio, listening to Dr. Cross talk about this and talking about what NDI is going to do for us along the roadmap. And before myself, only having used a traditional TriCaster, worked with Baseband, a little bit of IP with things like IVGA and some streams in and out. But I heard this technology and what it was going to do to change everything. And I just sat back in my chair and just sort of like my mind was blown as to like, wow, this is coming forward. And every year since we have seen new things adapt NDI. I, yesterday, you guys talked with a bunch of PTZ camera manufacturers all of those guys deploy NDI. And the idea being that if two things speak NDI, you can get them to communicate very easily without having to be an IT wizard. What Laurent's team at, at uh, and, uh, Netgear has done is amazing to be able to give us those ease of use configuration points. And then what we do at, at New Tech and Viz Group is basically say, hey, rather than memorize an IP address, it's a PTZ camera, we'll call it that. And when you interact with it, it's very human. So if you're an educator and wondering, is this IT stuff maybe too slick and too advanced for me? I would say NDI is very much not that. It is ultra easy and has been from day one designed to work in classrooms and work in churches with volunteers. Like that was our initial goals was make this crazy IT thing something that's palatable for just about anybody. Yeah, and I think... When we talk about NDI, to dumb it down all the way that we possibly can, we know you plug your VCR, I can't believe I said VCR, your, your, your direct TV satellite box to your TV via an HDMI cable. And in the broadcast world, we use SDI. Well, the beauty of NDI is now we can use the standard network cabling that is already in our infrastructure, in our buildings. And through that cable, we can send, let's give an example of a PTZ camera. The PTZ camera can send the video to the switcher, the mixer. And that video can be any format, any resolution. It doesn't matter. It's just sending ones and zeros across the cable. But more importantly, it's a two-way communication. So the operators on the network can also, they can work the PTZ camera. They can talk by comms to the person who's in the room over there. They can color grade the, the camera if they need to. They can put tally on for the camera, and they can even send teleprompting and other things over the NDI and bring in, like we bring in this PowerPoint that I'm bringing in that I'm using, you know, via NDI. It just allows this whole world to open up where in the past, every time you wanted to add something new, you had to go wire it and get the baseband to match it, make sure you dial, make sure you have the inputs. This is the expandability and flexibility it provides is dramatic. And sorry, Shane, I stole a little of your, your time, but I'm going to kick it back to you, you know, and go back to how do you think NDI has shaped modern productions? It's answered the age-old question of how do we ease getting video and audio sources in? You know, coming from, you know, not to date myself too much, but coming from tape, moving to disc, and then always having to hand this off or export and import, you've answered the question of ease of accessing your video and audio feeds um, and it's over the network so if it's just you've ironed out this, the solution that so many of us have been looking for but on the user end of this or the, maybe the new people into the industry this is just a common format and it is so easy for them to use um, but also that's the incoming. We can also now generate those NDI feeds over the network. So the in and the out, the NDI have just ironed out all of these workflows. They're so easy to explain and kind of onboard, uh, you know, workflows. But one other thing, and especially in Wirecast that I personally thank you is going to college as a cam op, learning all the post-production, learning everything. But in Wirecast itself, we have a PTZ controller. And so you can control pan, tilt, zoom. But if you look at the controller, it has exposure, white balance, presets, and it has all these things for you. So if you think about it, it is a mini learning module of how to operate cameras, not just pan, tilt, zoom, but focus, shot compositions, adding the presets, learning about white balance. And you could do this all on the fly and just simply like get a five minute education on cameras, thanks to NDI. And Lauren, I want to go to you now because 
NDI, IP, we talked about how your switch is so important and how it makes everything easier, but also NDI means that I can have the video in one room on the campus, go to another room on the campus over the network. I'm not limited to how long I can run a direct line. And I think that's the area where not only can I use one of your switches, but I could have several of your switches deployed in different buildings or in different areas. And I could have a switch deployed that can then speak to the rest of the other network. It, it, to me, you've taken away a barrier to putting video and IP into schools because when we were trying to sell TriCasters four or five years ago, the number one thing people would say, even before the pandemic, people would say is, yeah, but the, the IT department won't let that on their network. They're worried the video is going to kill everything. Well, having to make remote work, the IT people kind of got a little bit calmer with video. And now you guys have allowed the video people to have a lot more flexibility in the whole thing. So just talk about how NDI lets you scale. Absolutely. So, you know, I think we all understood by now that NDI redefined really the video production, you know, in general. And, you know, at the, at the center, you have this network and NDI can actually send with very low latency, very low latency, high quality video. But not only one, you can actually compose and, and send a whole lot of different video streams over a single category five or six cable. So what does it mean? It means that the uh, network backend still needs to be, you know, good at it. And uh, I just want to explain something quick. When we say the network becoming the fabric, when we say that, you know, it can, uh, NDI can traverse uh, Ethernet networks using uh, single category five, six, seven cables, we also mean that not all networks are ready for it because NDI uh, is a transport. It uses protocols such as multiple TCP, reliable EDP. It uses also a codec for, for the video transmission itself. It's using sometimes some multicasting and other techniques that IT EV networks can do. And not all networks uh, are ready for it. So our contribution by trying to standardize, not from an IT standpoint, but really from a Navy NDI standpoint, this distribution over a standard Ethernet network, we still really advise all portable studios, all boards, all CAL212 and education organizations to consider their existing network as an ocean and put islands for their NDI AV with certified switchers that are configured and good, you know? So we try to differentiate the control that can come from the existing IT yep. network from the EV itself and the video streams. So that being said, yes, uh, I can answer your question by saying that uh, under a incredible ease of use with the discovery that is fully automatic with all the devices that are up at any single client, PC, Zoom, uh, Teams, or, or TriCaster video production server, NDI has redefined live production because it is literally plug and play. Absolutely. And Julian, I want to kick to you on that because the, the pearls are really appliances. And the beauty of NDI is you could put, every time you add a pearl, each pearl that's NDI can see every other pearl on the network. So they all become aware of each other, which just makes, take it from there. I mean, I, I did, it blows my mind. Kind of what we've all been talking here around flexibility and scalability that NDI and putting stuff on the network enables, and that's something we see with Pearl. Where yeah, we've we've actually we've always had NDI available on Pearl too because that was kind of our our studio device for the spaces we're talking about here. But we were really excited. We just released a firmware update uh, earlier this week that will bring NDI HX to Pearl Mini, and that's something that we actually saw as a demand now. You know, during the pandemic, as we're talking about adding video on campus, especially in classroom, kind of. Uh, classroom capture, lecture capture spaces. Hey, we had a room that had a Pearl Mini in there for recording that, hey, we need a new camera in the back of the room to, to get that quality up. Well, with NDI, it makes it really easy to just have that camera connect right through on the network. And then cool, you know, classroom A can see it, but if we're, we have a special event that the studio team needs to pull something from that room, well, it's on the network. I can pull it straight across. I'm not worrying about SDI cables and transport and rewiring my classroom because I had to add a new device. 
I think it's something that we just see, you know, like Laurent was talking about with these benefits of AV over IP, it just lets us respond to the needs of our users and to the demand of the content that we need to create as broadcasters that makes it easy when someone says, hey, I want to bring in Professor Smith's video from his class. It takes 10 seconds on going into the Epifan cloud portal, pulling the mini in the room and sending it right to your board. You don't have to think about anything else. Now, we're going to get into remote production and cloud a little bit later, but for now, I want to talk about something that I think is important because the video system could be the same, but the usage isn't always the same because there's things that secondary schools a high school does with video, and there's things that a college does with video. There's a little bit of overlap there and, and things like that, but what I want to say is, is regardless of whether you're in secondary school, high school, higher ed, or even a middle school, one of the most valuable things about putting a video studio in your school district is the students get to create content. And the best content in the world for educators is the content that was created by the students themselves. Because now the students can say, I learned how to do this. I know how to use NDI. I know how to use a PTZ camera. I know how to color grade. Hey, I know how to edit on Adobe Premiere. I know how to use Wirecast. And we feel... In our industry, the video content creation industry, there's a real demand for people who know how to use these tools. And bringing people up to speed is one of the biggest pain points in the hiring process. So as a student, a high school student or a college student, when you can say you've used these tools yourself and have real world experience in it, you're going to go on the top of that pile. That pile might be for an internship in the summer at a local TV station. It might be what gets you into the journalism or the communication school that you're trying to get into. You know, I just think that the value of student-created content is as valuable as the studio itself. So when you're looking to do this and put the things we're talking about here at, into a school, remember that it's not just the content you create, but it's the value of the content creators themselves learning these tools. I'm a big hockey guy. And one of the best hockey sayings is, you know, don't, don't go to where the puck is, go to where the puck is going. Our industry is changing dramatically. What, what, what everyone learned during the, the pandemic was that IP works. Video over internet works. Video over your local network works. So those barriers are gone. What we also learned was there was a lot of crappy video made during that time. These are the kids we can teach how to make fantastic video that looks great, that they will have skills that will really take them to whatever level they want to go to. So I'm going to put this in the middle of the show because I think it's really important. Chris, you touched upon that your background came right out of school with that and that. So when we get to the part where we talk about secondary and uh, uh, college, I don't want you to just think about the video itself. But I want you to think about the students who are going to be creating that content. So uh, let's start with you, Shane. I think for the students creating the content, they need to understand the, the full production solutions. So, you know, on our end, we're reaching out to you know everyone here on this call. I've educated myself on all of their products. So who's coming to the students and providing them with the resources is key. For the students themselves, don't be limited to what maybe the class is providing. What do you enjoy? What does your family do on the weekends? And start incorporating your own content and maybe beginning to build your own character alongside of what the school or the curriculum is providing. So, and, and that's the beauty of this is it's an art. A content creator, you're an artist. So yes, take all of those things that you're learning and apply them to the activities that you enjoy or even shoot a little further. What do you want to do? And start honing those skills now with all of this, all of these, um, you know, video production tools available to you. That's from my heart. That's what I would suggest. Cool. And then Chris, I want to go to you because, you know, there's TriCasters, but there's TriCasters like the minis, which are a little more friendly, easier to use. Then there's the big boys, you know, that have a lot more complexity or what was used in network productions and, uh, you know, for professional sports games. So you guys have different products for different levels. So talk about that a little bit, you know, where you would see which of your products would be in, let's say, a high school setting versus what you would really recommend for a college. Sure, Gary. I want to actually take a, a quick second here to talk about, you, you were talking about 
empowering creators, right? These are content creators. 100%. And I want to just, I want to point out three people who I know personally who actually work in, I think a field that a lot of students are going to want to get into, which is esports. Uh, Ryan Thompson, who is now at Esports Engine, he's sort of a, one of their main guys. I met Ryan working in esports. Um, Ryan started his esports journey in high school, lugging his computers to events. Um, I know another guy, Will Abreu, same situation. He started his, he cut his teeth doing uh, fighting games. He's out of Connecticut, and and now he's a major guy in the esports scene. And uh, my friend David, who was working at Blizzards of the Coast, uh, oh, excuse me, was it? Excuse me, I'm confusing my Blizzards, uh, right. which was doing Overwatch League. Uh, he got his start really cutting his teeth at House of Worship at a church doing production. Uh, all of these guys now are in their 30s, uh, and they are major pieces of some of the biggest esports uh, conversations, productions happening globally. So when you're talking about empowering a creator, this is a real like trajectory for somebody who's at the high school level or the collegiate level getting access to these tools being refined on them is is you know it has real goals and real reach and and where that comes down to is like where you start at right if you're looking at deploying tricasters uh you might start at something like the mini i think the mini is an amazing entry level tool especially at the middle school level we, you know you touched on middle school i think there's a lot of content creation that's happening these students are growing up on youtube they're growing up on TikTok. For them, the world's already at their fingertips. So why not give them the opportunity to enhance that and grow that with something like the mini? And then I go to the growth and my own path of like covering sports at the high school and college level. I think something like a TC1 and really the one pro now, because I can do some slick things with that, um, are, are that perfect fit where we want to grow our production. We're a decent sized school. We care about our broadcast program. We care about our sports program. We want to do streaming and we're going to grow beyond that. That system is really all that and more. When I get to the college level, earlier in our conversation, we talked about those top tier colleges. TC2s, and I do say it with an S, because you have different departments, whether they're in digital, whether they're in marketing, whether they're covering multiple sports across the campus, whether they are for making their own esports arena, these guys are looking at these top tiers of systems. And, and what you're really getting as you go up the, the food chain there is better capabilities for graphics, more capabilities for inputs, the ability to stream multiple outputs, control multiple displays. Uh, and, and those guys really, really want that level of, of production. And so there's a TriCaster for everybody. And if you're looking at a school district Maybe you have a connection to the superintendent. Consider the fact that TriCasters on networks can talk to other TriCasters. We talked about that with Julian, how the Epifans can all sort of see each other. You know, you can really distribute something large across your entire campus, whether that be from the middle school to the high school interconnected to the secondary schools. I think there's opportunity there that a lot of people don't recognize. And it's fairly easy because you probably already have the infrastructure to do that today. Exactly. Now, Lauren, Netgear, you talked about islands. So I, I want to go where that was, because I know, especially for high schools, and I'm on my school district, the, what got them to embrace the thought of NDI was me saying, you know, you could set up the studio with its own switch. And then as you want to add other things in, you could put other switches or go to that switch. You could keep it off the main network. We're still going to want to connect to the network somehow to get out into the Internet. But I said you could really control what you're looking to do. So a high school is going to have some very different challenges than a uh, a college that can be spread out over multiple buildings and you know hundreds of acres. So talk about that and how the switching and you say the fabric, the mesh, whatever you get set up, it's a little bit more complex to just put NDI and a network switch in a high school versus trying to wire up a whole college campus. Correct. Yes, this is correct. And, and we, you can actually then uh, go up to the large universities, you know, which is another scale. So what I want to tell you is that that that's OK. OK, this is not complicated anymore. Why? Because at the end of the day, you still think of Ethernet. Ethernet is a protocol that is out there for 25 years, and this is by nature expandable. So. Of course, you will not want to daisy chain 10, 20, 30 switches because you're going to have some issues with something bad called spanning tree. But by observing some rules and also listen to my colleagues on that call, to, to the Netgear Pro EV design team when you have a question before a project or during a configuration, listening to some advice on one-on-one knowledge, how to do a star topology, 
NDI is fairly easy to, to implement across a number of switches. I can give you plenty of examples with, with you know, literally, literally uh, thousands of video endpoints, because don't forget that NDI is wide open and without very expensive hardware, you can actually convert anything anywhere with NDI, you can take existing hardware, you can take HDMI in, you can take the webcams, you can take software content or video produced on computers or Apple Macintosh, even phones, right? There is a there is an app for, for the for the iPhone and for the for the smartphones in general. So it's it's really easy and by observing quite simple rules. And you know Gary, what's the most important one? You need to let it go. Because the, the live video the you know it's really low latency and you don't have enough buffer on, on network switchers to to actually uh, 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 handle bottlenecks so as long as you do the math but students usually can do the math right as long as you know overall what is the bandwidth of your streams all together take some safety margin like 50 percent more and you're good because with 10 gigabits or even 40 gig or 25 gig or 100 gig you can actually in a large uh, uh, high school or uh, college or to the largest uh, universities that you guys have across the US, you can bring together fairly inexpensive and powerful Ethernet networks using uh, just, you know, good switchers with a central management. Yeah. You know, Lauren, it's funny that you said that because you mentioned something that I wasn't even thinking of is if we put in an NDI studio and an NDI based video approach, we could teach students the kind of IT side of NDI that goes beyond video, but it bridges what they're interested in. Now imagine when a kid says, I know how to troubleshoot IP video networks. He's in 10th grade for crying out loud. I love that. I, why? Because we love student created content. Now I want to go to you uh, and I know Epifan's got several different pearls and some of the pearls are NDI. Some of them aren't. There's, there's multiple pearls available, but I also and it's a two-part question for you because I also know that you guys have worked extremely closely with the content management systems like Panopto, Kaltura, and others. So I want you, I'm giving you two questions back to back. Talk a little bit about the different pearls, but then talk about what these management systems are because the schools that are using them, often their problem is, is but what hardware should I get to go with it? Or the schools that have deployed 10, 12, 15 pearls are like, how do I manage all this stuff? So it's a two-part question. I'll give you some extra time to answer it. Sure. Thanks. I'll kind of start. I'll start with the pearls and the hardware because I feel like they they yep. do tie in really nicely and natively with these content management systems, but they are really flexible in that you can do a lot of different things across campus with them. Uh, we have, like Gary mentioned, we have three different models. There's the kind of like Chris was describing with the TriCasters. They each fit into a really nice niche on campus. Kind of start top to bottom with the Pearl 2, which was – Kind of our workhorse device. We see this going in. If you have a smaller studio, you could almost run the entire studio off the Pearl 2, or you could be feeding multiple classrooms into it for capture and record, or you could be someone like the University of Oregon that's doing all that's running all their athletic events and has eight different cameras on their tennis center coming into one Pearl that can then choose which court is going to the Pac-12 network for that event. So it really gives you a lot of flexibility to bridge across different applications because of how many inputs, outputs, and the power the device has. Our middle device, the Pearl Mini, is, uh, as one of our universities called it, the magic box. There is probably, I know of 10 different applications on campus. I guarantee you after this show, someone is going to call me up and say, hey, I'm doing this other thing with the Mini on campus. And it's really that video Swiss Army knife. It can be deployed as, a, as an appliance in a room to do that lecture capture into the Panopto or Kaltura CMS. It can be used for live events. It has mic inputs. It has physical inputs. It can take an NDI HX. So you can run a sporting event right from the Pearl Mini. We have universities uh, like University of Michigan or University of Tennessee Knoxville down here by me that they basically, they have an events team that has a few of these Pearl Minis that they get a call saying, hey, we have you know, the Secretary of State is coming to campus for this big event. We need to live stream it. They can be up and running in 15 minutes with a Pearl Mini, and it, it gives you that flexibility there. And then the smallest devices are Pearl Nano. Uh, that is a single channel encoder that you can do some layouts and branding on. And we see the, those 
kind of whether it's a backpack kit that the guys at Oregon have that when they get called by the football team saying, hey, we need to stream this news conference, we need to stream this side thing, it's a place that's not set up, they can deploy quickly with a camera and that box, press one button and it's streaming out. Or it's uh, something like we worked with, you know, you mentioned USC as a big school when we started. We actually just finished a really cool project with them that allowed their students to do a lot of this self-serve content creation, their digital creative lab. And that recording and capture is powered by Epifan. So you've got these one-touch nanos that you can go in and you can record your TikTok video, or you guys can go in and, you know, a student dance group can just walk in there, press go, and they're going to have a really high, high quality record or stream that's branded for their student group or for the university. And all of those devices play really nicely with those CMSs that Gary mentioned. So when you're capturing, especially uh, lecture capture, so schools, we just put out a case study with NC State. I'm actually going to have lunch with the guys down the road at Middle Tennessee State that have 200, 300, 400 pearls deployed on campus. All of those are actually automated that when Econ 101 starts at 10 a.m., you've worked with the registrar, you've scheduled that in your Panopto system. Guess what? At 10 a.m. when that class starts, the Pearl is starting its record and stream of two channels, one of the camera, one of whatever ever contents in the room, and that's going right up into your CMS. And we've seen great student satisfaction out of that because now if, hey, I didn't quite understand how, what this concept was, you can go back into their, their learning management system and watch that lecture again and choose what they want to see. So their interactions with the professors are actually higher quality because they're not going back to ask to be so for something to be repeated, they're they're asking deeper questions because they can get that repetition at their own pace. And that's really the power of this technology when deployed across campus and that tight integration with the CMSs is that you can automate it all. And it's not just automation on the CMS side, it's the partnerships we have with the Crestrons, the Extrons, the QSIS of the world that you can completely automate that behind your room system. So you end up with someone like Magnus at uh, NTNU in Norway that a professor can walk into one of their self-serve labs, swipe their ID card, and everything automatically configures to their Panopto account. All they have to do is press the start button on the touchscreen of Pearl, and they can uh, record their own content. Yeah, I think the automation that you can bring is really amazing. And one of the things I, I want to say is that even if you don't have Panopto or one of these systems, you can use the Epifan Cloud to control multiple pearls to start and stop some of that. When you put the two together, it's really crazy. Now, Chris, Newtech's got some solutions in, in that marketplace too. So why don't you talk about what Newtech's done with over there? Sure, yeah. We've got uh, the CaptureCast, which is our, our product that's getting really into the electric capture space. Um, the idea being a, a lot of similar to what Julian was talking about, ease of use. Um, uh, a very slick scheduler built into it so that you can sort of look at the week and see, hey, what uh, what what classes am I capturing? And and we really, as we've talked about a thousand times here, uh, we really stress upon NDI the ability to get lots of sources in. So uh, up to eight uh, NDI full bandwidth sources or six HX sources <clears throat> that we can be uh, encoding into the uh, capture cast, um, the ability to distribute that out to platforms like uh, Panopto and Kaltura uh, and, and really working with these different learning management systems. And then a couple other pieces we're doing with like transcription. I think this is really important to the idea that if I'm at the college level and I really want to get deep into this macroeconomics, that I can search some of the key phrases and actually go back through the lecture and say, oh, hey, you know what? The professor identified that this is, you know, this is when he was talking about this in the lecture and really like focus in um, as we see different kinds of learners as the education space has grown to be a variety of different approaches to how we teach. Um, we're starting to see that not everybody does well in the traditional lecture hall approach, but with the ability to use these these new systems, something like the capture cast, we can then go back and say, actually, you know what, I know this is recorded. Let me go back and just look at the slideshow. Like, let me just listen to the professor talk and focus on the slideshow. And with the capture cast, because we're capturing the different sources, we can actually isolate that in the video player. And then they can just watch the slideshow as they go along and not see the, the lecturer uh, maybe moving around the classroom. Or maybe they just want to focus on a, a device that we're enabling an NDI, uh, maybe something like the overhead projector. And I just want to look at that, that entire source the entire time. So the ability to let different kinds of learners dial into what they're trying to go through. And then again, ease of use for anybody. But 
uh, CaptureCast has actually been a lot of cool talks recently with other scales of organizations. And I think in the education space, especially at the higher ed, if you're also working with like a medical facility, those guys have a variety of sources that they want to capture. And the fact that we can capture it all in NDI and have a bunch of CaptureCast being admin uh, really allows for some cool flexibility. And then if we look at sort of the high school and middle school level, we know that there's administration that's part of all of this and the ability to maybe capture some of this content and have an administrator talk to the board uh, in the state and say, hey, look, here's what our courses are doing. You know, here's a little bit of content that I could pull up very easily, go into, hey, last Friday's course on geometry and just have all that stuff tagged and the teacher's information there. And the teacher never has to touch any of this. This is a very different world than what we do in TriCaster, uh, not like what I'm going to showcase uh, uh, very soon to you your team and I want to visit you guys. Uh, uh, but this is ease of use, a web portal, click a button and just go and capture my lecture. Or, hey, it's scheduled. We know every Thursday we're going to do this in, in this particular room. So I think CaptureCast is really cool and opening up a lot of different ways for this uh, lecture capture and education to sort of grow and expand. And, you know, that, that brings us to integration with different softwares. And one of the softwares that, you know, schools got really adept at using during the pandemic with things like Zoom and Teams and Google Classroom and stuff. But Shane, why don't you talk a little bit about how we can bring those conferencing softwares into our video production and vice versa. And before you answer, I want to let everyone know that the people you're seeing on the screen here today are coming in via Teams into a TriCaster, and that's how we're working the whole show. And Wirecast, you've been really on top of integrating Zoom and, and Teams directly into your software. So Jane, just talk about how that's happened, because I think it's it's kind of amazing how the worlds of AV and pro video are colliding. Exactly, and you know, Telestream really did two things well with Wirecast and Wirecast Gear. Wirecast being, you know, how you assign your sources, compose your shots, and choose your destinations. But they really kind of took an open view to the switcher and how that would work and kind of pushed it in a completely new direction to make it easier to kind of understand of how to operate that. So we have an application that based on ease of use with full broadcast capabilities, but really focusing on the three things of ease of connecting your devices, ease of composing your shots and choosing your deliveries. Second amazing thing that Telestream developed was a full production solution. So taking the Wirecast gear, now we have a turnkey solution out of the box that will handle SDI, HDMI, IP, NDI, USB, cell phone devices, and a hybrid of those connections. So with that full circle of hybrid of connections and ease of use comes webinar. Let, if we think of webinars as internal and external, what Wirecast is essentially try or with the developments, especially team with enabling NDI, Zoom, it's on their roadmap, and I'm sure every other webinar platform will follow, is integrating those NDI capabilities and Wirecast able to discover those. So with the kind of new look of how we approach switching and live production, Wirecast and Wirecast Gear has really done a great job of bringing production value back into webinar meetings. I agree. And now I want to talk about another type of connectivity, SRT. Now, SRT is more, NDI is like kind of within the facility, within the network. SRT is when you're connecting points that are outside. And I want to go, I want to go to you, Julian, because the Pearls make great SRT endpoints. And, you know, they could be the encoders, they could be the playback device. And I want you to talk about the Pearls from an SRT point of view, but I also want you to work in, and I, this is another long question, I know, a little bit about how you guys are using the Epifan cl cloud for control and even using them for remote productions. Remy. Sure. So I, I think the big thing here is kind of working back from that is how we see this whole thing as really an integrated system and an integrated uh, tool set that you need to deliver these events from, you know, you need, yeah, you need the Netgear switch on site to connect your devices locally to talk IP to each other. Like you said, NDI is great for that. That's why we have NDI on the, the Pearl Mini and the Pearl 2, because they're great for that in the room. You can do the production there. 
Whereas SRT, like you said, lets you get outside the room. It lets you get outside that network. It lets you share whether it's like the University of Oregon does to the Pac-12 network, where if you see if you see Oregon Ducks on TV, it's coming through an Epiphan encoder via SRT to the Pac-12 network. To other schools where, hey, we just need to get this up into, you know, streaming into YouTube or, or our president is getting interviewed on CNN for a panel. Well, TV stations tend to use SRT as remote contribution. So cool, I can use a nano and send it right up. Our cloud tool, like you, like we've talked about a few times, allows you to actually manage all of those encoders completely remotely from anywhere. So whether it's uh, the folks at LSU Shreveport that have 100 classrooms doing classroom capture, and Matt can be sitting at his desk there and check on the entire estate and see, oh, you know, classroom 201's got an issue. Oh, it just looks like the, uh, the recording has, hasn't stopped on that one, so the memory is a little bit full. He can manage that completely remotely, or he can go in and say, hey, you know what? I need to stream Classroom 201 via SRT into my production control room or into a, another school's control room because we're doing a collaborated class where each professor is going to do some part of it via SRT and have someone else watch. Our cloud tool set not only lets you do that, but talking about Teams and Zoom integrations, we're actually able to, with our Connect service, extract folks from calls as SRT and bring them in either via one click to a Perl or send them to another production tool that talks SRT, whether that's a Grass Valley suite or whether that's you know any of, any of the stuff that we're on this call talking about. And that cloud service allows you to really do these true remote productions. Like if, you, if you're at ISE a couple of weeks back with us, we were running a studio in our booth where Dan on our team was sitting at the office in Ottawa, controlling the entire show that was going on in Barcelona with guests from Toronto, LA, and across Europe just Hey, they're on a team's call. We're going to bring them into the studio and, you know, dance halfway across the world running the show. So we make it really easy to be able to adapt to this new world of remote production. And we see a big uh, growth in higher ed because it allows you to bring in those experts from other universities and really collaborate to deliver better education because it's no longer, oh, I got to figure out how I, can, how I can get Professor Jones from from USC to fly out here to Western Massachusetts to join our class and talk about how uh, well, one of my professors in college was the uh, archivist that worked with the CIA uh, decommissioning committee for Vietnam. So he'd fly around to all different schools to speak. Well, now Professor McAllister doesn't necessarily have to get on a plane. He can join a team's call and you can bring them right into the classroom. Cool. And now, Chris, I want to go to you because I know New Tech Scott, Live Call Connect, you've got NDI Production Bridge, you've got NDI Bridge. And you've got the whole concept of a cloud versus remote architecture. I can't give you an hour, but I can give you a couple of minutes. Talk about what new tech's doing in that space, especially how it can be used by, you know, educators. For educators, I think there's nothing easier than what we're doing at just the base NDI level. Um, even this call, which we're using some of the cooler production tools behind the scenes, uh, just as easy as having teams enabled with NDI is something that I, I know some of my other contributors talked about. Um, it, it's not very difficult to grab a webcam and bring it into your, your team's environment. That's actually what I did here. I, I'm running two free pieces of software, one called NDI webcam to generate my webcam. That's gonna be my look for the show. The other one is actually a screen capture software. So if I needed to showcase my screen or my webcam in either case directly, I could do that. So this is two free pieces of software uh, that you can download today and, and have very ease of use to integrate. As we step forward and look at things like our distributed production tools, uh, we talk about Live Call Connect, which uh, is our ability to uh, very easily join a Teams or a Zoom call or a Discord call or any number of other services, things like Slack, et cetera, um, and just grab those sources for production needs. This is we're talking about the high school level or the college level where we're doing uh, sort of these remote environments. I think a lot about remote sports and uh, even today your college uh, football coach can operate the Zoom on his phone so now you can bring them in as a remote contributor wherever he's at and talk about, hey, why did the game go this way? You know, who was our, our star player, et cetera. Um, and then when we really graduate to the top level, that's NDI Bridge. Uh, if you've seen me on a call in the last two years, you've seen me wave the flag of NDI Bridge because of all the cool things it does. Uh, NDI Bridge basically says, hey, we do all this NDI stuff typically within one network. What if we take this technology and bring it over to the wide area network? And, and what would make that easy? Uh, and NDI Bridge does that. So uh, not a ton of IT needs to set up. We open some port. Uh, particularly, uh, I think we defaulted to 5990, but you can actually have it be whatever port you like. Uh, you can actually copy the information. So 
the password, the IP address, et cetera, to give over to a teammate if you wanted to. We do have a an encryption on it, but this basically says, hey, turn my NDI from a local area network thing, all the things I've connected on my switch, on my Netgear switch, and, and bring this over to any of my studios anywhere in the world. Uh, and that's the, the beauty of Bridge. And I think you're going to see some really slick things as we push along on Bridge uh, because of how easy it is. And because it's fully NDI, you know, when I'm doing Bridge out of my apartment and going to a, a studio, everything that's NDI in my apartment can be seen by the studio and vice versa. And this allows me to do some really slick workflows like remote for esports. If I want to do my replay and not have the replay op travel with me because maybe he couldn't make it, maybe his parents didn't want to sign off on it, maybe he's just not, uh, maybe he's sick at home, but he can still do replay if he wants to. Uh, this can now be done with the beauty of Bridge. And, and I, I'm a big advocate of pushing on the technologies, pushing things forward, because we haven't talked too much about it, but we have this new control surface called the Flex. It's our first NDI control surface. And today the Flex operates the way a lot of traditional control surfaces work, except it's IP. So we hook a network cable up to it. Um, in the very near future, let's say around that NAB time, the Flex will be bridge operatable, which means that my Flex can be anywhere in the world, and out of its little HDMI port, I can get my TriCasters interface. And on the, the displays on the on the keys, I can see the different sources. And I can control this thing literally anywhere that I could pop up a network. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I, I know we, we, we didn't talk too much about it, but it is one of the things that I'm the most excited about. And and if you're going to be attending any of the events that New Tech's at in the next six months, you have to touch and see the flex. It is different than what we've traditionally done with our control services. It is so much more adaptable for a brand new user. And pairing that with these abilities to easily control these different kinds of sources, whether it's in a traditional Teams meeting or something more advanced, using things like Co co-working with SRT and NDI, you know, all of this is possible within our systems, but getting your hands on the flex and just touching it and seeing it, it's the, one of the most unique experiences out of the box. And this is, if I take my new tech hat off and was just a guy in the field, like I was eight years before I joined the company, I would still recommend that people start with the flex. It is just that new view, that new ideology that we see coming through where our production guys are no longer just TV engineers. It is anybody working from any kind of background and, and they can approach it really easily with something like the Flex. Very cool. Now, Lauren, we actually had a question come in. So I'm going to jump off of the script because I think you're the perfect guy to answer this question. And I thank you for your patience while everyone else has it. It was, how much bandwidth on a network will I need to use NDI cameras at a remote site to transport them back to a remote switcher? So this gets a little complicated because I have to have bandwidth within the network then I also need up and down bandwidth as well. So well, let, let's say that I have, you know, three or four cameras in three or four different school buildings that could be anywhere in the world. And I have a TriCaster or a, a Wirecast gear going in uh, Poughkeepsie. How, how do I control all that stuff? And how much bandwidth do those schools actually need? Well, this is going to be the bandwidth that you want, because that's what's the the best about, you know, NDI in general is that you have control. You can choose your resolution. You can choose your uh, method because don't forget that HX, when it comes to one, uh, really, really make the video much lighter. So I'm going to answer to you uh, either using a bridge or using, uh, you know, other kind of uh, uh, over the one techniques. We reasonably assume that 1080p, 1080p, you know, uh, 60 frames per second, it's going to be, uh, you know, less than 10 megabits per second. And if we go all the way up to the 4K, uh, 60, 4 by 4 by 4, but, you know, I'm not sure it's actually going to happen very often that you want to transport <laughs> HD, yep. HDR over the, uh, over the internet. But in that case, uh, manipulating the uh, compression and manipulating your NDI tools, for instance, you can reasonably stay uh, under 30 meg per second per, per stream. Now, one of the things I want to talk about is if someone really has a detailed question about that, you can actually call the folks at Netgear who have a great support thing, kind of talk about what you're getting yourself into, and they will give you fantastic advice, not only on what you need to do it on the high end, but on some, everyone's going to wish this and end up in a $10,000 solution. They'll help guide you in a solution that more fits your budget and explain where you can 
cut a little bit, make it a little more compact, shave a little bandwidth here and there to make the whole system work with any resolutions you're looking for. So that was so cool. I want to thank you guys so much for all being on the show. This was fantastic. So I want to thank you for coming in. I'd like to give everyone a last word to say something, but we're running so long. I think I got to pose some of the questions we got first, and then we'll go to your final goodbye. So I'm going to go to the first question first, which was from Pedro. If you want to connect some NDI devices wirelessly, what device would give you that access points and the configuration of the network? Now, what I can tell you is New Tech used to have a product called the Spark that worked over Wi-Fi that they discontinued, but the folks at Kill of You have a product still in their product line that works over Wi-Fi. But Lauren, it, it, Wi-Fi is great, but it's not always perfect, correct? No, this is correct. And I know you. we are running short of time, so I'm going to very slick. Don't go multi multicast, okay? Just don't go multicast over Wi-Fi because it's going to be a, a problem at the end. So if you can stay reasonably with a unicast point-to-point -point transmission between your encoder or your decoder, depending on what's Wi-Fi, you will be good with a, a professional access point, maybe a Netgear access point. Unicast will be good. Uh, multicast will, uh, will present challenges. So don't do multicast over Wi-Fi. Fantastic advice. Tyler asks, is there a time lag with NDI? Can you combine these sources in a system with SDI or HDI or, ca or HDI cameras? I want to say the, the current version of NDI is so close to baseband. Very few people can tell the difference. And SDI, HDMI, we've got different converters that you can use to get one into the other. But uh, who, who wants to answer that question? I got you here, Gary. Cool. A little, little inside baseball here. Um, now that NDI exists in lots of the broadcast production switchers, they can time with NDI. So there is no difference between what's coming in on an HDMI or an SDI or an IP source because they're looking for the NDI uh, timestamping. Like they're, they're looking for what we're doing in IP to make this all sing. Uh, so if we, if we put on our engineering hats, we're used to things like uh, Blackburst or something like that for our sync and, and, and all these pieces, we can, we can step away from that because we're working with the network and just know that all of our sources are now being synced on that. Uh, so you're, you're, you're really ahead of the game when you're mixing these kinds of sources together. So whether it's a baseband source, SDI, 4K, does, you know, that, that won't matter and it won't be a difference. And, and when we're talking about the latency on NDI, it's, it's 14 milliseconds. It's, you know, it's, it's scan lines. Uh, yep. So unless you're, unless you're from the future and you have a, a slick, like robotic eye that can measure it and dial it back that, that deep, you will not be able to see the difference in live production. Cool. And I just got another question. It's about NDI bridge. So I'm going to go right back to you, Chris. It's <laughs> do NDI bridge feeds have fixed bit rates that are large, like full HDI, like full NDI, or can it adjust based on bandwidth? So here's what we do with uh, with uh, Bridge in, in a quick synopsis. We take all the full bandwidth sources that you want to be available. So that could be everything or it can be a subset. We, we give you the controls to say how much each feed will be. Then from bridge computer to bridge computer, that's the feeds that happen, right? So you need to have a computer on both sides. So a computer on one end says I have 10 feeds. I'm going to make them all two meg and send them over. They'll all be two meg. So you can do your math there for your up and down. Uh, but on the other side, now from, from my house in New Jersey to California, what they're seeing in California on the other side are full bandwidth NDI feeds. But what's traversed the network isn't. So you get the full flexibility of full bandwidth on your production side. So you don't have to sacrifice anything from a quality perspective. And in the middle, where we maybe don't have the, the greatest infrastructure, we don't maybe have a, a fiber drop between me and every studio I want to interact with, I use the bridge protocol to do that exchange. So so you really sort of get the best of both worlds. And this is like, you know, in the layers of NDI, I think we're, we're being, gonna be approaching six very soon. Um, that, that might be a spoiler. Uh, uh, as we approach new iterations of NDI, uh, uh, that, that we always Always add more and more and have this cross compatibility and so bridge really like leans on the fact that there's so much of the ndi ecosystem and and productions maybe only touch certain aspects of a camera control things that we've talked about source acquisition but as a technology it's really well developed to support so many different things and that's where it comes across in bridge 
Cool. And now uh, this is the part where I thank everyone for being on the show. Thank you, guys. And guys, if you could leave all four guys up while they give these answers to these questions, just so they can kind of interact with the, each other a little bit on the whole thing. I'm going to give you each a chance to give some last words. I think one of the things that's incredible about this is while you have four different companies who compete or don't compete, you all work together. It's become a bigger ecosystem of all this. And when we're talking to schools and educators, I want Shane, I want you to really talk about how they could feel comfortable that the stuff they put in now, if they ask the right questions, can really be future-proof for the near three to five years. And the reason I say that is because adoption left ahead, the technology is catching up, but all this technology at its core is really software or firmware based. More improvements are happening based on the code people are writing to make these devices bigger and better than actually magic new hardware that's been invented. Because we're really building on essentially hardware that's been around, that's kind of standardized. But we're taking it to levels that the people who created that hardware never dreamed of. So, Shane, we just want to final last words. Talk to us a little bit about, you know... What Wirecast, Telestream, you know, we're using Sherpa for this show, which is a, a Telestream product and how we're communicating, hanging our questions and stuff. Just final last words for, for our edu EduStream guests. Uh, first, Gary, thank you for having Telestream here today. Secondly, all of our partners on the show today are readily available to integrate with existing workflows right now. So yes, maybe the district or the university has a budget to do a whole new production. But we also went just made through two years of making investments in video production as well. So everything we've talked about today, our partners here are ready to integrate NDI into your future proofing workflows. Wirecast Gear has definitely made that uh, streamlined. It is out of the box, ready to go with your traditional workflows or NDI workflows. So again, Gary, thanks for having us here today. I appreciate it. And Shane, you know, I think I'd be remiss, if, be, especially because it's education. We know education is essentially a very big Apple Mac world. And I think it's important to mention that, you know, Wirecast runs, you can get a PC version or a Mac version. You get the feature sets, you get the NDI, you get all this. So if you're a school district that's standardized on Macs for your AV labs, whatever you're doing, you're included in this. You can still play in this game. You don't have to throw all this stuff away. So when you say using existing equipment, I think using your existing Mac is a big part of that. So I just wanted to mention that the Wirecast software has that flexibility. Julian, your last thoughts? I, I think I'll, I'll echo Shane and say, you know, it's 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 been really fun to be here with this whole group and, and just kind of like I said, talking about how we can all work together to plug into existing workflows or create new ones as you evolve. And I think it was great you brought up how a lot of this stuff that's changing is not the hardware, it's the it's the software updates and the firmware that runs on it. I mean, we've with our Pearl devices, they've been out a little bit of time, but we've released over 180 different updates to the Pearls to the yeah. fact that that Pearl Mini you bought three years ago, well, as of Monday, it can now do NDIHX. What's going to come next? There's there's a lot more fun stuff happening there, but I think it's that confidence in all of us here. And, you know, we live and breathe it every day at Epifan that we want to make sure that we work to deliver solutions for your workflows to help you make them better today and that you can keep coming back to us five years from now to say, hey, you know, we've added, Chris came out with something new in NDIH, you know, in NDIHX. I want to make sure I can get that into my production. And we're going to, we're always there to make sure that's going to happen because we want to serve you to deliver better content and better video for your students and, and all your stakeholders. Awesome. Chris, your last thoughts? Uh, I want to, I'll say two things. First, uh, we're talking with educators here and, 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 and educators are going to work with students. Um, if your student base wants to learn, uh, deeper about their new tech equipment. Uh, the new tech university courses are entirely free for students. So if you want to get an access to that and your student Great. has an EDU, they are totally enabled. The second thing I want to talk about, and it's a little bit kumbaya, but it, it really warms me and, and why I do all of this is that I'm here with Shane, I'm here with Julian, I'm here with Laurent, all because we're talking about this NDI thing that we started a couple of years ago. Um, and at Viz Group, that is how we see it. Uh, you talked about competition. I don't see competition. Every time I see somebody doing a production using an NDI tool, I'm happy. I know that this thing continues to grow. When we started this, Gary, you know as well as I do, yeah. a lot of people looked at us sideways. They were like, what are you guys are giving Ain't this gonna away work. for free? <laughs> it's, you're giving away for free. And what? You're going to do? Like the, the, the questions we got, for them, it seemed like this far unattainable idea. And here we are. 
and it has just continued to grow and grow and grow. It's a core part of what Viz Group does. Obviously, it's a core part of what we do at New Tech with our pieces. It's its own brand. And when we are at big shows, whether that's NAB or Infocom, you can point to so many people who are on board with this concept and have grown. And that is both by the power of the technology, but really the power of adoption. So if you are an educator looking to get into it, one, it's easy. Two, a lot of times it's free. And three, you have so many options. It is not this little bottleneck thing that only we do and we're just trying to sell you on. No, there's so many manufacturers you can work with today. Chris, that, that, that was great. And that, it's a great segue into Laura because like I said in the beginning of the show, I really consider these Netgear switches to be the super glue that pulls all this stuff together. Simply stable on a level that an educator can support, that you don't have to worry about that you're going to be making all these tech support nightmares that you need an IT, a PhD in IT to run it or support it or make changes. But the other thing about it that I think is worth mentioning, Lauren, is really talk about that pre-sale support team that you guys have at Netgear. Because for an educator, I think you've got to be comfortable enough that you could pitch it to your board, to your dean, to your money guy. And these guys can not only help you lay the whole thing out, they can help you with your pitch. So talk about just, it's just the best team. I just love the team you put together for that. Hey, thank you, Gary. So first of all, thank you for having Netgear participating into that show. So yes, uh, we, you know, I think everybody understood that uh, the network uh, is not the poor guy in, in that whole story because that's the fabric. So you've got to go with good hardware and good software. We talked about that. And yes, Netgear uh, certified uh, a line of switches called the AV line uh, for NDI4, NDI5, and I'm um, Pretty astonished. I just heard in the i6, right, Chris? I mean, we'll see. And uh, <laughs> we uh, uh, someone was getting fired. <laughs> It was not enough, you know. Uh, you don't go to Amazon. Go to Broadfield. Uh, select uh, NDI TV certified switchers, Netgear AV line. But even if you do, you still need advice before any any implementation because the pre sales it's really important when it comes to the design of the network, but also you know just simple questions about you know the overall uh, IP. Uh, scheme and the subnets and the VLAN. So Netgear formed a team with, uh, at the beginning in the US, three uh, certified IT slash AV system engineers. Now we are 20 across the world. So we can even trust our Asian members or European members when it's really early in, in the East Coast and California is still, you know, like in the middle of the night. So this team is uh, actually uh, there to help just one email away uh, ProEVDesign at Netgear.com, ProEVDesign at Netgear.com, and uh, we can help on any possible topic. Well, we are not going to configure the Cisco's, but as long as we can uh, trust the fact that the Netgear AV line switchers will be used, we can provide all the insight that a education facility from a, a, a primary to secondary to, to college to university can 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 you know ask uh, to to us but we are not going to stop there gary as you know because when the switches are coming in we are here to help for the configuration and transfer the knowledge you know so that after that everybody is equipped and ready to go and i will not stop before saying that after the project there will be some glitches there will be some encoders or decoders that will vanish out of the TriCaster, right. you know, as we say, it's it's easy. They all show up, but sometimes they go away. And uh -huh. and uh, in these rare instances, there will be no finger pointing because the reason why Netgear is at this table is because we we being certified, we feel capable, and we do. We are. We feel capable of diagnosing any possible issues and providing quick fixes. What a great end to the show, because I think everyone in the education world who's looking to get into video should feel a lot more comfortable about IP video, about NDI, about investing in their school's production studio and laying out. So thank you guys so much for being on the show. We ran way too long. That's on me. That's my fault. So now i got to rush through the end of the show because we got some prizes to announce. So thank you guys. And I'm going to sign you guys off, give us a little wave. And now we're going to go through the uh, kind of end of the edgy stream. Yeah, there it is.
All right, EduStream TV, it was a three-part show. We started with the folks at LiveView. We had a great interview about how it could be used for remote production and athletics, and we talked about their product line. Yesterday, we went into picking the right camera, picking the camera that's the right camera, be a PTZ or a handheld camera, working into NDI and other technology. Today's show, I think we knocked it out of the park, talking about the infrastructure and, the, and what's available for you for all levels of education, which is what this is about, whatever levels you're at, whether you're primary, secondary, K-12, through small school, big school, big university, small local college, we've got the people here. We can help you. You can give us a call. We'd be happy to talk to you about this stuff. And also, we have a network of dealer friends throughout the country so that we can give you tech advice directly. And if you really want to get in touch with someone who can come in and help you install and configure this whole thing, we have local integrators in your area that we can refer you to. So give us a call. And we'll work that through. I think today's show was great. I got to thank all our sponsors and vendors. So here are the people who participate in the show. It was brought to you by the folks at Broadfield, the video guys, but I got to give big props to all these people here who not only contributed prizes and other things, but they contributed their time and effort to make this show great. So I want to thank everyone who participated. And I believe we're at the best part that everyone's wanting. Stay tuned for the prize winner announcements. I have to run because I actually have to go off to visit my daughter in Ohio. She's at Ohio State. I can't wait to see her. So I'm going to be out for the show. Jen's going to come in a little bit later after we roll this video to let you know who won the big prizes. So thank you very much, guys. This was EduStream. I hope you learned a lot, and I thank you for tuning in. And we'll be back to our regular programming in the coming weeks. But EduStream, I think, was a huge success. I believe we had almost 400 attendees. We had multiple questions on multiple shows. I can't get over it. I think my production team did a great job, so I want to give big kudos to Adam and James. Get it going. You know, when you bring in four people from different parts of the world for a show, it can get a little tricky, a little dicey. These guys rose to the occasion. We did some great jobs here, so thank you, everyone. Give, your, give yourselves a big round of applause, boys. And I'm out of here. This is Gary, the, your host for EduStream. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you learned a lot. I know I did. Hey everybody, so actually Jenny is not going to be announcing the prizes. I'm going to be announcing the prizes. And so to start it off, we are giving away a Telestream Wirecast Pro license. And congratulations to Robert H. from Maryland at the Coppin State University. Make sure that you check out your email. Uh, we're going to be sending you an email with all the information on that. Let's go to the next winner. Boop. Oh, I'm sorry, it's already up there. Uh, so we're giving away one of the Netgear switches that Laurent had been talking about. This is a, uh, a tabletop switch uh, for perfect for a smaller uh, studio. And this is going to Kim R. from Michigan, uh, the Schoolcraft College. And again, make sure that you're checking out your email because we're going to be sending you some more information on that. Next up, we have an a Epifan AVIO SDI video grabber. Uh, that is going to be from Epifan, obviously. Uh, that is going to Scott B. from Rhode Island, uh, Smithfield Public Schools. Uh, again, make sure to check your email, Scott B., because uh, we will be uh, sending you some information on how to receive that. And lastly, we have some Huddle Cam webcams. We're giving away actually 50 of them, which is crazy. Uh, and congratulations to Nicholas E. from Washington, Central Washington University. Uh, definitely make sure that you check your email. Uh, we're giving you up to 50. You can take as many or little as you would like. 